Manatee Sharks, it's Miss Amanda from the library. Today we're going to read a Kwanzaa story. It's about the Guza Saba, the seven principles of Kwanzaa, and how a family comes together using those principles to help their family and community. In Seven Spools of Thread, a Kwanzaa story. Seven Spools of Thread, a Kwanzaa story. By Angela Shelf Medeiros, illustrated by Daniel Minter. In a small African village in the country of Ghana, there lived an old man and his seven sons. After the death of his wife, the old man became both father and mother to the boys. The seven brothers were handsome young men. Their skin was as smooth and dark as the finest mahogany wood. Their limbs were as straight and strong as warrior spears. But they were a disappointment to their father. From morning until night, the family's small home was filled with the sound of the brothers quarreling. As soon as the sun brought forth a new day, the brothers began to argue. They argued all morning about how to tend the crops. They argued all afternoon about the weather. It is hot, said the middle son. No, a cool breeze is blowing, said the second son. They argued all evening about when to return home. It will be too dark soon, the youngest said. Let's finish this row and begin anew tomorrow. No, it's too early to stop, called the third son. Can you see the sun is setting, shouted the sixth son. And so it would continue until the moon beamed down and the stars twinkled in the sky. At mealtime, the young men argued until the stew was cold and the foo-foo was hard. You gave him more than you gave me, whined the third son. I divided the food equally, said the father. I will starve with only this small portion on my plate, complained the youngest. If you don't want it, I'll eat it, said the oldest son. He grabbed a handful of meat from his brother's plate. Stop being so greedy, said the youngest. And so it went on every night. It was often morning before the seven brothers finished dinner. old man died and was buried. At sunrise the next morning, the village chief called the brothers before him. Your father has left an inheritance, said the chief. The brothers whispered excitedly amongst themselves. I know my father left me everything because I'm the oldest son, said the oldest. I know my father left me everything because I'm the youngest son, said the youngest. He left everything to me, said the middle son. I know I was his favorite. Eh, said the second son, everything is mine. The brothers began shouting and shoving. Soon all seven were rolling around on the ground, hitting and kicking each other. Stop that this instant, the chief shouted. The brothers stopped fighting. They shook the dust off their clothes and sat before the chief, eyeing each other suspiciously. Your father has decreed that all of his property and possessions will be divided among you equally, said the chief. But first... By the time the moon rises tonight, you must learn how to make gold out of these spools of silk thread. If you do not, you will be turned out of your home as beggars. The oldest brother received blue thread, the next brother red, the next yellow, the middle son was given orange thread, the next green, the next black, and the youngest son received white thread. For once, the brothers were speechless. The chief spoke again. From this moment forward, you must not argue among yourselves or raise your hand in anger towards one another. If you do, your father's property and all his possessions will be divided equally among the poor of the village. Go quickly. You only have a little time. The brothers bowed to the chief and hurried away. When the seven Ashanti brothers arrived at their farm, something unusual happened. They sat side by side from the oldest to the youngest without saying anything unkind to each other. My brothers, the oldest said after a while, let us shake hands and make peace amongst ourselves. Let us never argue or fight again, said the youngest brother. The brothers placed their hands together and held each other tightly. For the first time in years, peace rested within the walls of their home. My brothers, said the third son quietly, Surely our father would not turn us into the world as beggars. I agree, said the middle son. I do not believe our father would have given us the task of turning thread into gold if it were impossible. Could it be, 
said the oldest son, that there might be a small piece of gold in this thread? The sun beamed hotly overhead. Yellow streams of light crept inside the hut. Each brother held up his spool of thread. The beautiful color sparkled in the sunlight, but there was no nugget of gold in these spools. I'm afraid not, my brother, said the sixth son, but that was a good idea. Thank you, my brother, said the oldest. They took turns weaving cloth out of their spools of thread. They made a pattern of stripes and shapes that looked like the wings of a bird. They used all the colors, blue, red, yellow, orange, green, black, and white. Soon the brothers had several pieces of beautiful multicolored cloth. When the cloth was finished, the seven brothers took turns neatly folding the bright colored fabric. Then they placed it into seven baskets and put the baskets on their heads. The brothers formed a line from the oldest to the youngest and began the journey to the village. The sun slowly made a golden path across the sky. The brothers hurried down the long dusty road as quickly as they could. As soon as they entered the marketplace, the seven Ashanti brothers called out, come and buy the most wonderful cloth in the world. Come and buy the most wonderful cloth in the world. They unfolded a bolt and held it up for all to see. The multicolored fabric glistened like a rainbow. A crowd gathered around the seven Ashanti brothers. Oh, said one villager, I have never seen cloth so beautiful. Look at the unusual pattern. Ah, said another, this is the finest fabric in all of the land. Feel the texture. The brothers smiled proudly. Suddenly a man dressed in magnificent robes pushed his way to the front of the crowd. Everyone stepped back respectfully. It was the king's treasurer. He rubbed the cloth between the palm of his hands. Then he held it up to the sunlight. What a thing of beauty, he said, fingering the material. This cloth will make a wonderful gift for the king. I must have it all. The seven brothers whispered together. Cloth fit for a king, said the oldest, should be purchased at a price only a king can pay. It is yours for one bag of gold. Sold, said the king's treasurer. He untied his bag of gold and spilled out many pieces for the brothers. The seven Ashanti brothers ran out of the marketplace and back down the road to the village. A shining silver moon began to creep up in the sky. Panting and dripping with sweat, the brothers threw themselves before the chief's hut. Oh, chief, said the oldest, we have turned the thread into gold. The chief came out of his hut and sat upon a stool. The oldest brother poured the gold out onto the ground. Have you argued or fought today? asked the chief. No, my chief, said the youngest. We have been too busy working together to argue or fight. Then you have learned the lesson your father sought to teach you, said the chief. All that he had is now yours. The older brother smiled happily, but the youngest son looked sad. What about the poor people in the village? he asked. We received an inheritance, but what will they do? Perhaps, said the oldest, we can teach them how to turn thread into gold. The chief smiled. You have learned your lesson very well. The seven Ashanti brothers taught their people carefully. The village became famous for its beautiful multicolored cloth and the villagers prospered. From that day until this, the seven Ashanti brothers have worked together farming the land and they have worked peacefully in honor of their father.